Hello there, I am Halcyon and I would like to welcome you back to Bandit's Ballads. Chapter 4 to be exact. It's been almost a year and a half since the journey of Balon Blacktide began in the dungeons of Mizea and to be fair, he's come a long way since he was a starving convict but he still has a long way to go before he becomes the feared robber baron he's always dreamt of being. So far we've made some good progress in pursuit of that ultimate objective. We've managed to steal quite a bit of money, invested a fair amount of that into transportation and uh, talked about 40 people into joining our gang of outlaws. Well, technically there have been more than 40 but we're only counting those who still remain cause the dead can no longer contribute to our cause. Not only that but we've also reached an important milestone in our criminal career when we've successfully committed our first act of robbery by persuading a group of villagers to let us take care of their cargo. That took a bit of uh, convincing but now that we've done it once we should be able to do it again and again until we're filthy rich although I have a feeling I'm going to need a lot more manpower in order to do this effectively. And now that everyone is up to speed, even those who found their way here before watching the first three chapters, it is time to begin. Just give me a moment to dissociate from the Halsey Lion and assume the mantle of Balon Blacktide. Ah, much better. So, let's not waste any more time, because the good people of Calradia ain't gonna rob themselves. Take these Vlandian villagers for example. I had to put 18 of them into the fucking ground before the last two decided that their lives are too big of a price to pay to be holding onto material possessions. So they thanked me for the wisdom I imparted upon them, and with their spiritual awakening now complete, they went back to their homes and probably lived happily ever after. The things I've taken from them can easily fetch a thousand dinars but only if I take the time to find a buyer that's willing to pay me a decent price. If I sell them in the first settlement I find, I won't earn nearly as much as I could if I just exercise some patience. So anyway, after that robbery, I paid a visit to the nearest village and sold all the garments I've taken from those we've murdered throughout the third chapter. All in all, I would have gotten 1500 gold but the villagers were a bit short on cash. So I kept a third of my stolen apparel to hopefully sell it into another settlement. But I still needed more money. Conveniently, a party of four raiders was nearby and I tried to catch them but my large warband was moving much more slowly so uh, we eventually abandoned the chase and switched our focus towards a party of 10 looters who in theory should be a lot slower. They were but the problem lies with me you see. My gang's mobility was impaired on one hand because our party size increased, on the other hand it's because we didn't have enough mounts for everyone and on the other other hand, it's because of all these prisoners we were dragging along. Best thing we can do is set these sinners free and keep only one of each. If there's fewer scumbags to pay attention to, maybe I can notice when one of them offers to join the crew. Some of my men told me that we could have made some good money if we sold these captives to a ransom broker but to do so, I would have had to infiltrate a town which I couldn't remember how to do thanks to the concussion I suffered about a year ago. If I want to sneak into towns, I'm gonna have to train my roguery skill which isn't particularly easy to do. Eventually we caught up with these looters and took their coin. Then we attacked another party of looters which provided me with some free cardio training in addition to their money. But these are just leftovers, we needed bigger prey and my prayers were answered when I spotted 18 sea raiders that were bound to have some good stuff on them. So we pursued them and when we caught up, another gang of 4 joined the fight. Now, we may have twice the numbers, but they have twice the shields and javelins, so we had to be careful. If you've watched chapter 3, you'll know that my mission in these fights is to ride in circles to make the raiders waste their javelins on me and my fast horse. It would also be great if I managed to avoid getting hit but if I can't, at least I'll rest easy knowing that my efforts prevented some casualties on my side. 
So that's exactly what I've done. And while the raiders were busy squandering all their missiles on me, my soldiers were given the order to charge. In a matter of seconds, the enemy was overwhelmed and their advantages rendered useless. And so, the battle was won and I earned about 3 fifty. In addition to the money, I also found a set of throwing axes, which I consider to be better than the javelins, as they can also be used as decent melee weapons. Emphasis on decent. I know javelins can be used in melee as well, but they're nowhere as good. But when I caught up with the survivors of my initial attack, or rather, when I had them all killed, I found something great in the loot my men piled up at my feet. A veteran warrior axe, which is much sharper than the hatchet I've used thus far. Claimed. This'll be my mainstay melee weapon from now on, until I find something better, which is unlikely unless we attack a lord and put his soldiers to the sword. Once we were done sweeping the battlefield of all valuables, me and the boys headed to the nearest village and sold some spoils of war for precisely a thousand dinars. Technically I was supposed to get a bit more than that, but the villagers were a bit short on money and because I was in a charitable mood, I let them keep the change. This act of generosity was quickly invalidated, however, when I attacked the settlement in an effort to conscript more fighters to my cause, and also hopefully obtain a weapon of Vlandian design, which is something I've been attempting to do for a couple of weeks now. 39 versus 21 the fight was going to be easy, as long as I could keep my unshielded troops away from the enemy's crossbow bolts. So when the battle began, I crossed the river and told my troops to move behind the house which would provide some much needed cover from enemy fire. Now, for some reason, I couldn't place my soldiers too close to that house, so I positioned my infantry and cavalry as close as I could, and when the enemy spearmen make their approach, they're in for a nasty surprise. As for the archers, they were told to go further away from the front line, while still remaining in relative cover. This way, neither spear nor bolt could pierce their flesh, while they're free to fire upon the foe. But before my infantry got in position, the spear militia closed in, and I was forced to give the order to attack. As the bodies started dropping, so did the morale of the enemy, which quickly led to them running away to save themselves. Unfortunately, my men took after the runners instead of focusing on the archers, but issuing the right instructions immediately solved that issue. You see, when you command them to charge, your soldiers will run at full speed towards their closest enemy, even if that enemy is currently leaving a stinky brown trail as he runs away in a panic. But if you instead order them to advance, your soldiers will slowly approach the enemies that are still active combatants. When they closed in with the militia archers, the results were devastating and it didn't take long to send them running for their mamas. Little did they know, I was going to send them to their other creator. When the dust settled, a total of six crossbowmen lost their lives, along with another six spearmen, which I didn't really care about because all I wanted for Christmas was a crossbow, which I received. But you know how the saying goes. Be careful what you wish for, cause you might just get it, and uh, yeah, I did. But I didn't get any ammunition for it, so for now, this was nothing more than a useless trinket. One that I could lose if I wasn't careful. But hey, beggars can't be choosers. I was happy with what I got, and that includes the three Vlandian cavalrymen who were forced to join the gang. To give them an incentive to play nice, I promised not to raid their village for at least a couple of years in return for their loyal service. At some point, I won't be able to make this promise anymore, but by that time, my army will probably be too big to fail, so it won't matter any longer. After that victory, we set course towards the next village where I sold more looted gear, got more money, and amassed a little over 4,000 dinars. We couldn't attack it, however, because the militia was entirely capable of wiping us the fuck out. 
so I couldn't do much except leave and look for more targets. In a few moments, I began another cardio training session which rewarded me about 200 dinars. Not that it matters anymore, at the stage I'm in right now, this is pocket change that doesn't even add up to the daily wage I must pay to my men. Still, that's almost a day's worth of fuel for my war machine, so I have no right to complain. What am I even complaining about? That the fools I'm robbing are too poor? That's on me. I should pick wealthier targets. Even so, attacking looters equates to bending down to pick up a few coins that someone clumsily dropped on the ground, so it's not too much effort. But before this turns into a philosophical analysis on the merits of murder, let's find more people to plunder. These 15 bandits will do nicely if only there wasn't a Vlandian army close by. Luckily for me, the nobility has bigger fish to fry, and once I made sure they weren't going to catch me with my pants down, I approached the outlaws and told them that resistance is futile. But those are big words that their tiny minds couldn't comprehend, so they thought I just insulted their mothers and they attacked me. Now, did I do anything useful in that fight? Good question. To give you an answer, no, I did not. I was given a free flight lesson though as I felt my soul leaving my body after a javelin hit me with full force. If the bastard who threw that survives, I want him in my army. But it all hinges on my men and how they avail themselves of their duties. We've got the numeric advantage and logic dictates that we should win, so it remains to be seen. That took a bit of effort, but through a combination of cavalry charges, infantry pushes and arrow showers, victory was ours and the brigand who sniped me has been captured. Well, that's probably a different brigand, but if we assume it's the same guy, it makes for a more interesting story, provided he joins us in the future. Whatever, what's important is that I got myself a new pair of slippers and 300 dinars, which will keep my gang going for a little while longer. And since I was close to a Vlandian town, I tried sneaking in, but before I approached the gates, I was reminded that I'm an incompetent infiltrator, as I only had 18% chances of success. So instead of getting myself jailed, I chose to continue on my path, eventually arriving in a village where I got another thousand for the loot I sold. It would be nice if these settlements had more money, it would be even nicer if I could enter a town to access the local market, but that is impossible for me to do, unless the local population chooses to rebel against their highborn landlords. Another option would be to make peace with one of the major factions, but that's not something I intend to do, unless they offer to pay me heavy money as an incentive to get me to cease my hostilities. For now, I'd keep raiding whoever I could and selling my stuff into villages for a thousand dinars at a time. Anyway, as I was probing the area for more victims, I found a group of charitable souls, but when I caught up with them, I could not ask for a donation just yet because they were in the middle of an enemy village. Enemy for me, allied for them, which means the local militia would have stepped in to piss on my parade. So I allowed the peasants to leave for the time being and resumed the pursuit once they were out of the settlement. When I caught them again, I noticed that their goods wagon was empty, which means their coin purse must be full since they are returning home after a successful trade trip. As you already know, gold is useless unless you can take all of it through robbery or extortion. So when I first told them, your money or your life, they refused, so I was given no choice but to give them a spanking. My battle doctrine when it comes to raiding villagers is to have the archers harass them with arrows until their only options are to either run away or charge at us, but this time I did not have the patience to wait for all that bullshit. I still gave everyone the order to advance towards our victims, but I rushed forth, stepped down from the saddle and it was time to put my new axe to the test. Now, I could tell you about how I swung my axe to the right and to the left and talk about each move I performed, or mention my thought process behind every decision, but I'll reserve the combat analysis for fights that are actually challenging. My only challenge right now was to block any stones that are aimed at my head, Approach those who are isolated and strike them down. Well, one of these guys performed the advanced chambering maneuver, which basically deflects my incoming attack with his own strike, but I reacted quickly, blocked the hit and then cut his arm off. 
or I would have if I had any dismemberment mods installed. But plenty of people are already playing with mods, I prefer to showcase the game as it is, out of the box. Oh, sorry, the Halcy Lion personality should have been asleep now. Just give Balon a moment to return. I assume you already know what I've done with the runners. And you can safely assume I'll keep doing this every chance I get. Because keeping your body in shape is very important, which reminds me, this is something I should also take care of in real life. Staying in shape, not uh, killing people. But excuse me, the Andrew personality had to voice his opinion and now I gotta shut him up. Give me a moment. There we go. Man, what is it with these alternate personalities taking over at the most inopportune moments? They're killing my immersion. Anyway, because 8 of these civilians escaped, the chance they'll just surrender is low, so I might need to attack them again and leave only one survivor to ensure a successful robbery attempt. My immediate concern was to finish the fight as quickly as I could and to make that possible, I ordered my cavalry to charge with me at the forefront of the formation. And what do you know, as soon as we made contact, three of the villagers went into shock and the other five fled for their lives. But I needed one of them to escape, so I ordered my cavalry to cease their hostilities, while I had four of them killed. As for the last survivor, I made sure that he was sure that he ran away and didn't actually stand his ground. By escorting him away from the battlefield, he'd get the message that he's a coward who values his life above all else and that he'll be allowed to keep it, as long as he gives me everything he carries. He did. With the first two attacks combined, this robbery earned me a total of 720 dinars. Alright, this has got to be the biggest payday of my entire career since I got over here, although it's still not enough. But it's considered rude to look a gift horse in the mouth, especially when I got 10 of them. Those will probably fetch another 500 gold and we're on the right track to becoming a force to be reckoned with here in Calradia. Just a few more scores and we'll have the finances to get there. Speaking of scores, I want to mention our next fight, if you dare describe it so, which was actually the opposite of a score. We caught two mountain bandits and they were aware they couldn't put up a fight, so they offered to join my gang. But I greedily refused, ordered my men to attack them and got 16 gold for the trouble. I would have had more to gain if I just accepted them with open arms, but at the very least, they survived the attack so I imprisoned them and I may be able to recruit them in the future. Our next score wasn't too big either, but it was many times larger than what we've just taken from those two bandits. A little over 600 gold taken from a mob of 35 looters. The first 300 were taken after our first fight and the other half was given to us as the survivors of that attack surrendered themselves to me. The only thing worth mentioning about this fight was my axe throwing. Three throws, three hits, three kills. It's said that comedy comes in threes, although I fail to see the humor in this situation. I guess the looters retreat was kind of funny because when their morale broke and it was time for them to fuck off my battlefield, they didn't turn back to run away from my men like normal cowards. They chose to flee through my people and a lot of them ended up dead before I even got the chance to train my athletics. I guess panic reduced their IQ to a big round zero. But isn't that true of all human beings? But I digress. The only thing that is certainly true is that I needed more money so it was time to find more victims. It didn't take long to run into the villagers from Horsger which specializes in breeding horses. If I were to catch these ranchers before they arrived in their local city, I could have stolen their mounts and improved my party's mobility, but we were too slow and couldn't catch them in time. As such, we were forced to wait for an entire day until they left the safety of Ostikan's walls and when they finally did, it was time to mug them to get their money instead. The horses they just sold must have fetched at least a couple thousand, if not more. But when they tried returning home, my gang was blocking their path. So they tried making a run for it in the opposite direction, 
Fortunately for me, they just sold all of their horses, meaning they've lost their speed advantage and when I finally caught them, they were willing to pay nearly 700 dinars just to leave them in peace. 700 gold and I wouldn't even have to kill anyone? That was a hell of a deal, but you know what? Out of sheer principle, I had to refuse and try to obtain more. So I rode towards them, downed a couple of them with my throwing axes and when I realized their stones still hurt my delicate skin, I ordered my soldiers to charge. Until the farmers decided to retreat, after which I harvested some free experience points. It's almost harvesting season! But by the time my training came to an end, five of these boys made their escape and that number is probably high enough for the peasants to delude themselves into thinking they can say no to my generous offer. They did say no, but because my last attack rewarded me with 200 gold coins, I knew for a fact they had over 2000 dinars on them. So I needed to at least attempt a robbery, which is why I didn't just send my men to kill them all, and chose instead to join in the attack. That's the only way to control the battle and allow one of my marks to escape, otherwise my men will kill everything that moves. And maybe when he's all alone, the survivor will decide to give me all of his cash, since there's nobody left to judge him for his cowardice. After we killed all his friends, the last survivor was still defiant to the bitter end. This feller was cooperative from the get-go, but he wasn't cooperative enough and now his bodies lie dead. I really wanted to kill him as well for saying no to me, but he did make me an offer I couldn't refuse. 523 dinars. I would have preferred to take everything, but this is the best I could get. Now, my options were either to kill him, take a few workhorses and a hundred gold, or I could take 500. He drove a hard bargain, but in the end, I let him go and now that I think about it, I should have probably taken the first offer I was made and spared them the bloodshed. But if I think even better, I did extract slightly more wealth by doing this, instead of accepting the initial offer. All in all, I got 900 dinars, whereas the initial offer was 700. Is 200 extra gold worth the lives of 23 villagers? On second thought, I don't care. The drowned god certainly doesn't care either. In fact, he relishes the sacrifices. Shortly after that little act of extortion, I found another training opportunity which rewarded me 222 gold and brought my athletics level to 75, which enabled me to unlock the third perk, one that unfortunately has nothing to do with running. However, with my thick thighs and well-defined abs, my rippling physique would add a bit of extra weight to my arguments making it easier for me to persuade noblemen to join me into battle and noble women to join me into bed. And that's not the only advantage to being a Chad, because this perk also indirectly attracts five additional fanboys to my cause by increasing my maximum party size. Athletics wasn't the only skill I developed throughout my journey. Riding on horseback for so long enabled me to teach my men a technique that improves their traveling speed. And I've also learned a one-handed weapon trick that allows me to deal more damage when not wielding a shield. Something that can come in handy if I ever infiltrate a town, where the open carry of battlefield weapons is forbidden. After that brief moment of personal development, it was time to face my toughest challenge yet, a battle against 31 Sea Raiders. By now you're already familiar with how these outlaws operate. Their shields protect them from projectiles, and the rain of javelins they can unleash has a high chance of killing a lot of my men. So for the first time since my arrival to Calradia, I had to use actual battle tactics. I am no strategic mastermind, so I'll keep things simple. The main principle is the same one I've always relied on, albeit on a larger scale. Divide et impera. However, because the opposing force consists of 31 javelineers who are capable of deleting me in one hit, I could no longer be the one who rides around attracting the enemy's projectiles. Someone must still do it, but for now, let us arrange the infantry in a line formation and place them further away from the enemy to delay their approach by 10 extra seconds. 
At the same time, the cavalry shall go to the right flank and assume the diversionary role I've always taken upon myself and draw enemy fire because even if one or two of my riders get murdered, the rest can still be a big, tasty target for the pirates and most importantly, I'd still be alive to continue issuing orders and keep the battle from devolving into a mindless melee that gets my people unnecessarily killed. At the same time, the archers were positioned in front of the infantry in a spread formation that would allow them to effortlessly fire upon the foe as soon as they get in range. Normally they'd get placed behind the infantry, but this would dramatically decrease their range of engagement. By placing them in front, they can just shoot the enemy until they start hurling their javelins at us, at which point the rangers will get behind my shield wall. But we're not quite there yet. For now, the horsemen were ordered to move towards the left flank while still maintaining an adequate distance so as not to die from a javelin overdose. Thus far, my plan was working as intended. Instead of rushing towards my main fighting force, the raiders chased after my riders while their sides were getting peppered with arrows. It took a while for half of the enemy force to grow a brain and realize that our rangers were vulnerable, but by then it was already too late because their morale was hanging by a thread, which eventually broke. But moments before that happened, I already moved my archers behind the infantry, which was given the order to charge. So I decided to leave the infantry deal with the remaining raiders, while I went after the easy athletics experience that the runners would graciously provide provide me with. Should I even bother mentioning my training sessions every time? I mean from now on you can just assume I'll keep doing this every chance I get, until my physical condition reaches what is considered to be peak performance. The loot itself was shit though. It cost me more money to train my men than I earned from this fight. But at least I received a set of high quality javelins that I might use at some point. As soon as we were done looting, I saw something that I've never seen before. A huge mob comprised of 70 looters. Such a large congregation is bound to carry a lot of money, so I couldn't just let them leave, but before I engaged, I paid really close attention to my surroundings and I noticed a Vlandian lord nearby. Peric and his 67 soldiers were impossible for me to deal with, but my party was already disorganized and the only thing I could do was fight these looters and then hope for the best. As for the fight itself, the only special thing about it was the sheer size of the enemy's army, which was proven to be ineffective against the basic tactic I've already used in my previous fight. These looters were even more pathetic because they have nowhere near the offensive or defensive capabilities of the raiders we've just defeated. What are their rocks going to do against armored cavalry or a shield wall? And I may not have mentioned this, but after all the fighting we've done, many of my men have become trained warriors that the looters couldn't hope to defeat. Anyway, the cavalry kept them divided, the archers were enjoying the target practice, and the infantry was standing ready to charge when the enemy got close. When the thieves clashed with my warriors, they quickly realized that the situation is hopeless and they tried to escape, but, uh, you know. Despite the massacre we subjected them to, 17 of the looters managed to flee. And I could have double tapped them to get more money, but remember, a Vlandian lord was in the vicinity and I needed to get the fuck out of there. Honestly, there was no reason to attack them again because this fight only rewarded me with 276 gold and if I were to squeeze them, I would have gotten half of that amount. As soon as we disengaged from that fight, I made a beeline towards the tree line, where I'd have a mobility bonus compared to the Vlandian, and ran past the looters, praying to the drowned god to get me out of this mess. He did, as my pursuer switched his focus towards the looters we just let go. In the end, those lads couldn't escape serving my purpose. Once I was sure I'm no longer in danger, my next objective was obtaining a bunch of bolts, because my crossbow is useless without them. But in order to do so, I had to assault more villages and put their militia to the sword. It was either that, or a fight with a Vlandian lord, which wasn't something I was sure I could do. Because I wanted to get this done as quickly as possible, I went back to the settlements I've already attacked, in hopes that they've replenished some of their militia, which would provide me with an easier battle. 
First on my list was the village of Ormanfard, which had four people defending it, but the only pretext I had of challenging them to fisticuffs was raiding their village. When I did, they refused to put up a fight because they didn't think it was worth the effort. Which also applies to what I'm doing right now, so I stopped the raid as soon as it began. Next settlement on my list was Kaleus, where I forced the locals to give me some supplies. But their militia also refused to fight due to how outnumbered they were, and I was hoping that a little bit of fire and brimstone would motivate them to fight for their homes, but they couldn't care less. Because this provided me with a decent amount of roguery experience, I kept raiding until a Vlandian lord rode to this village's defense, at which point I was forced to flee. Sure, I was disorganized, but my party recovered its mobility before the authorities caught us. And I then set course towards Vlandia, while also paying a visit to every Batanian village in my path and selling my loot to each of them. When it seemed that the Lord abandoned his pursuit, I gave chase to a bunch of looters, wiped them out, took their stuff and then remembered that maybe I should sell my workhorses in the hamlet of Deriat, which offered to pay 50 dinars per head. I sold 20 of them for precisely 1000, but that's when the consequences of my raiding Kaleus came to haunt me. You see, that lord never abandoned his pursuit, in fact, he continued following me and kept out of sight. When I tried to return, he blocked the only way out and I was trapped. I tried my best to wiggle my way out of this situation. I even allowed my prisoners to go free, but I just couldn't escape. When we met, Thomund introduced himself to me and so did I to him. But with the pleasantries out of the way, he gave me an ultimatum. Surrender or die. Hmm, I didn't like either of those options, but fortunately for me, there was a third. A way out, in a sense. I could have negotiated a peace with Thomond. And not only would he let me walk free, but he'd also be willing to pay me 5,000 dinars as an incentive to stop my raids towards his faction. Remember, I killed quite a few peasants, attacked several villages, and disrupted their production. But I felt like I could do a lot more damage to the Vlandians and increase the amount of money they'd be willing to bribe me with. So I refused to take this offer because I had another ace up my sleeve. I could send a third of my soldiers to keep the enemy busy, while me and the rest of the gang slip away unharmed. And so, I did. And not only did I lose 14 brave warriors, but also a decent chunk of my loot as well as several horses. But most of all, I lost any sense of pride I had in myself because only a coward flees while his men give their lives for his cause. But it was either that or returning to a familiar experience which I vowed to never repeat. When the shouting faded in the distance and I was sure I escaped, I've taken a look at my troops to determine who we've left behind, only to realize my good friend Luther led all those men to their deaths. But surely not all of them have perished, some would only get themselves captured. Coincidentally, Thomund had five prisoners, all of them looters, so maybe there's a chance Luther is still alive. But even if he is, by the time I mount a rescue mission, he'll probably have already made his escape. That is if he didn't get sold into slavery, executed or even recruited by the Vlandians. We may never see him again, although only time will tell. But my mission must continue. Moments after making my escape, I ran into a group of mountain bandits upon whom I sent my soldiers. And when they were victorious, they brought me a share of the spoils, most important of which was a set of woodland garments that are slightly worse than my rugged gambeson but were equipped nonetheless because they're a bit more aesthetically pleasing. Then I continued my path towards Vlandia, met with the villagers from the silver mine of Dreamor, robbed them for a total of 420 gold and several sumter horses, and then took a pit stop into the nearby village of Maraven, where I sold some loot and finally amassed a total of 10,000 dinars, which is a rather important milestone as it marks the financial independence of my gang of outlaws. What I haven't mentioned is that after I robbed those diggers from Dreamor, the inhabitants of Maraven have just left their homes, 
trying to sell a large shipment of wood into the nearest town, but when they saw me, they ran the other way, and after my business with their settlement concluded, it was time to strike a new deal. Give me all your timber or I'm gonna kill ya. At first they said no, but after I single-handedly killed 14 of them, they seemed a bit more open to negotiations and eventually handed me everything they were carrying, which amounted to 62 units of wood, 9 sumter horses, a few sacks of grain and a bit of butter. That and the equipment worn by those I've killed. All in all, I'd say that this could fetch me another 2000 dinars. But not if I sell them into the nearest village, because, uh... Well, this village already produces wood. Therefore, I need to sell this in an area where timber is scarce if I want to turn a profit. I'll have to pay attention to what prices I'm being offered for these goods, and then make an informed decision if I want to get paid more for my efforts. Delayed gratification. That's the secret ingredient to success. Even for a raider. Maybe these Calradian bandits would do better for themselves if they could just grasp this simple concept. I should write a self-help book for them, but then again, I'm pretty sure they're illiterate. But now that I had about 10,000 gold and enough loot to keep myself above this threshold, I had one more objective I wanted to achieve finding some ammunition for my crossbow, which, as you already know, can be done by attacking Vlandian villages and slaughtering their militia. Before arriving into the settlement I was planning to attack, I also ran into a couple of looter gangs whose defeat rewarded me with 500 gold. That's a first, it's unusual for rabble like this to carry that much cash on them. But then I arrived into the village of Rulund, which was only defended by 17 people. And because I thought my soldiers could handle that fight all by themselves, I did not bother joining them in the assault. Which would have been a waste of my time, because they handled the situation like pros, and took no casualties, save for the two who suffered light injuries that they could quickly recover from. As my men were looting the battlefield, one of them brought me the thing I was looking for. A quiver containing 20 crossbow bolts. Now I am complete. Well, somewhat. I have the exact arsenal I need, even though it's not in pristine condition. Maybe one day I will invest some of my stolen money into freshly forged gear, but for now, I'll be paying the iron price for everything I need. To recap, my arsenal consists of a warrior axe I took from sea raiders, a shield stolen from mountain bandits, and a fully loaded crossbow which took several village raids to obtain. Now it was time to put it to the test. So I approached the first party of villagers I found, but before giving the order to attack, I asked them what they were carrying. A hundred sacks of grain. Fortunately for them, that was too heavy to carry because I sold most of my workhorses. Even if I could haul it, grain isn't very profitable and I didn't want to bother with it. So these farmers were let go as I went to scour Vlandia for better targets. See, I'm not entirely incapable of mercy, especially if the reward doesn't justify the effort. Merely a day after that encounter, I found my way to the outskirts of Charas and then accosted a group of looters, who had no idea they'd be participating in my social experiment which aims to prove the effects my crossbow can have on enemy morale. Unfortunately, my experiment didn't go very well, because in order for the crossbow to do anything, its user is supposed to be competent. Which is a bit difficult, seeing how it's his very first time wielding such a magnificent weapon. It did however prove itself capable of killing in one shot, as long as that shot lands in the target's head and there's no helmet to dampen its effects. The results of my experiment were also skewed by my very impressive detachment of archers, who quickly made these boys realize that crime doesn't pay, unless you're part of Black Tide's crew. But I wanted more conclusive evidence of my weapon's effectiveness, and because I also needed more horses for my warband, I decided to lie in wait until the villagers of Savinth leave their settlement and head over to Charas to sell their mounts. The plan was to commit a robbery, but just as I was about to intercept them, a regiment led by a Vlandian lady passed by as she was headed into the city as well, and the only thing I could do was get the fuck out of her way. Which also meant I got out of the villagers' way, and this allowed them to arrive in the city and sell their animals. 
Oh well, if I can't get their horses, the next best thing is to steal their money and reinvest it back into mounts. When they finally left the city, there was nobody around to help them. The first thing I've done when the fight began was riding towards the enemy. When I was in range, I dismounted and started shooting at them, hoping that this would train my athletics in addition to the crossbow skill. And that might have happened if I killed any of the enemies. Unfortunately, at this range, my bolts quickly lose their power and not even a headshot could instantly kill a villager, although it came close. As the distance grew smaller, my bolts became deadlier and now I could easily one-shot one of these fellows, provided I hit him in the head or neck. Not only that, but as our opponents advanced, they wandered within my archer's line of fire and that was pretty much the end for them. Once they ran away, I took after them, chasing that sweet athletics experience. Once we defeated them, I earned 249 gold, which isn't a lot of money, but remember, this is only a tenth of what they're carrying. If I could rob them, I'd earn a total of 2.5k. In order for that to happen, however, I needed to reduce the amount of people in their party to one. So it was time for round two. This time, they were a bit more cooperative, offering me 700 gold to leave them be, but you already know. There's more money involved if I attack them, so I did. This time, I shall attack them solo, since my men can do more harm than good. Well, they do harm anyway, but I don't want them messing up my robbery attempt. When I got close, I dismounted and started shooting. First bolt went into a villager's neck, but it wasn't a lethal hit. The headshot that followed finished the job. Next was another headshot which downed the target in one hit, and also sent the remaining three enemies running for their lives. But I kept shooting at them, landing another headshot which unfortunately only dealt 99 damage. If that guy was staying still, he would have instantly died, but because he was running in the opposite direction, the relative velocity of my projectile was lowered by his movement speed, which is why he survived. I was actually rather impressed by that, so I decided to let him go, choosing instead to put his friends into the ground. After I've done so, I was hoping that with a crossbow bolt embedded in his skull, the last survivor would be easier to convince to part with his money, but he boldly refused. I must have destroyed whatever part of his brain controlled his fear response. Because he valiantly stood his ground against my 40 raiders and refused to give me everything he had, so robbery was no longer an option. Extortion, however, was, and he offered to pay me 624 dinars, and with that, my business with the Vlandians is concluded, at least for now. Actually, no. Let me head over to another village and sell some of my loot. Now I'm done, and with that last transaction, I now have 13... Uh, wait a sec... 12,000 dinars in my bank account, a sizable gang of 41 ironborn warriors, and enough mounts and cavalry units to maintain a respectable traveling speed. That might not sound like much, but it is a solid foundation upon which I can build my criminal empire. To put things into perspective, it's been less than a year since I obtained my first weapon, so I'd say we've made good progress. And even if I happen to lose all of this, the training I've been through for all this time and the arsenal I put together are enough to help me bounce back into action because I can now easily destroy entire groups of peasants or looters with just my crossbow. Let's just hope that will never come to pass, as it would be a shame to get all of my gangmates killed at the same time, but as long as I'm careful, I have nothing to worry about. It'll take a while for my gang to reach the top of the food chain, but if I were to venture a guess, we can now easily defeat 50% of all the enemies we encounter, if we so desire, and we're still fast enough to get away from the other 50%. For now, there's still a lot of things I need to accomplish, but we'll do so in the next chapter because this one has come to an end. So anyway, thank you fellas for tuning in, especially those of you who made it this far. You are wonderful, and I hope to catch you in the next one. Goodbye for now.